Hello friends and welcome back to Study Tonight. In this video, I'll be talking about some of the useful database transaction examples that will help you understand what database transactions are. Although that is something that I've already covered in a previous video that I created explaining database transactions. So if you haven't seen that video, go check that video out first and then come back to this video because in this video, I'll cover a few examples to help you understand the practical usage of database transactions. I've seen a lot of videos and I've mentioned in the last video as well. A lot of creators on YouTube have mentioned that database transaction is rather a theoretical concept, not a practical concept. And I strongly differ. Maybe, you know, they have not worked on some practical application and they don't think that database transactions are that useful. But in every programming language, you'll see when the programming language interacts with the database, there are features that you can use to enable database transactions and use them whenever you are interacting with the database. So in this video, I'll give you a couple of examples where you should consider using database transactions, where you should ignore it when you are you know, developing any application. So let's get started. So as you guys might already know, if you have seen the last video that I created, if you have not seen, you know, please go ahead and see that video first. So a database transaction follows, you know, basic properties, which are termed as acid, not the acid, you know, the chemical one, but you know, the properties, a combination of four properties, which is atomicity, constraint, isolation, and durability. So I will not get into the details of all these properties, but let me explain you, uh, you know, what these properties mean. So atomicity means that, okay, you know, every, uh, you know, database transaction when executed, you know, either everything passes or everything fails. There's no in-between state for a database transaction. Constraint means, you know, whenever you execute something in a database transaction, all the SQL queries must respect the constraints that are provided in the table, right? Unique constraint, primary key constraint, foreign key constraint, etc. Isolation means, you know, whenever we execute certain queries inside a database transaction, those must be executed in complete isolation. For example, if there are two users interacting with the same application at the same time and, you know, performing the same operation. So, uh, obviously, you know, the same uh, backend calls would be fired from the application, right? If two users are using the same application at the same time and there's a common database, right? So the application would be interacting with the database to perform the same particular thing, right? Maybe, you know, it can be uh, uh, two users are trying to purchase the same product. And if for the product, just a single unit is left, then only one of them can buy, right? If the execution of the database queries happen at the same time, maybe the application will give back a successful order completion for to both the users, which is something wrong because we just had one unit of the product. So that's why isolation comes into picture with database transactions. So for such scenarios in real world applications, we should definitely use database transaction because isolation is a key feature that database transaction provides, which is super useful when it comes to, you know, real world applications that we create, e-commerce websites, social networking websites, etc. Durability, every change that has been made uh, through SQL queries or, you know, through interaction with the database under a transaction must be permanent. So these are, you know, basic properties that uh, a transaction implements or the transaction brings in. So if you are able to uh, implement all these four properties, you know, you are able to implement a transaction. So let's see uh, the various scenarios where we need database transactions. Before moving on to the scenarios where we need database transactions, let's cover the scenarios where you don't need a database transactions. So it's not necessary that for every a particular you know interaction with the database your application must follow the standards of transaction it's not necessary right and in different programming language it can be different the implementation can be different so i'll give you a basic example of how you can do it and you know whatever programming language you use you can see in that particular programming language how you can implement transactions right so if your application is performing basic read uh, operations on the database tables for example basic you know select queries are being fired even if you are firing a single uh, select query or you are firing, you know, 10 or let's say 100 select queries, you don't have to worry about database transactions because these select queries would not change uh, the data inside the database tables. It will just read, right? So n number of queries can be fired together. You know, a thousand uh, users can parallelly read the same data if they are not affecting the state of the data, if they're not updating the data. Reading the data is totally fine. You don't need database transactions for that, right? So if your application is performing basic read operations, ignore transactions. Also, if, you know, for some case, so apart from the isolation case, if, you know, you have an application which is just performing, so if you have a table, and in that table, one insert is being done, right? And it's an harmless insert. By harmless insert, I mean, you know, if, for example, 
a user is signing up for your application and you are saving the user data into the user table right now for that particular user you'll be saving data into one single table and if you're performing a single insert then again you don't have to worry about database transactions because multiple uh, changes in the database data is not happening only a single change is happening so you don't have to worry even if that particular change fails even if that particular insert fails then also it would be okay you know this particular single insert fails you can simply tell the user okay you know oops you know some error happened please try again etc you should not worry about uh, you know the intermediate or inconsistent state of the data because it was a single insert that was being done and that failed that's totally fine similarly for update and delete as well until and unless you know these are not affecting this isolation part so for example like i said for a e-commerce website now you have to be a little careful when deciding whether you want to use database transactions or not so your decision of deciding whether you know you want you need database transactions or you don't cannot just rely on these particular points right you have to be a little extra cautious for example i'm saying you know in single data patient query you don't need database transaction but that cannot be always true right for example if i have, if we have an e-com website where we have an admin panel who is uh, you know who can monitor and update different stuff on the ecom website and there is a general user who can visit the ecom website and maybe you know purchase some product etc now if there is some product available right and the user can purchase it and the admin can update you know where maybe the stock for this maybe the pricing for this etc and the admin decides okay you know post 12 pm uh, we will update the price of this particular product and will offer 50% discount right now if the user is also interacting with the same model into which you know the admin might be performing some update whether it may be you know a single update but it is affecting the state of a entity which is also being accessed by someone else so for the such cases as well you know maybe the user is tried to buy a product maybe the admin is also trying to make updates to it so such updates even if single should be done in transaction because when a transaction starts to execute it you know takes a lock on the data that it is you know affecting so if some other sql query is trying to affect that particular data you know the database will return an error it will say okay you know some existing operation is ongoing on this particular data and you know you know uh, the other query maybe come back later and work on the same data so isolation is a very important aspect of database transactions that you should always keep in your mind whenever you are uh, you know creating some small or large application if you are you know working at a product based company or a services based company where you interact with database where you write queries or features which are interacting with the database so these are things that you know you should always keep in your mind so now this was that now let's come to the cases where we need uh, which is obvious you know we need database transactions right so these are the cases where you need database transaction and these are the most obvious cases right like i said some cases in which i am saying that you don't need even then you can uh, have a situation where you might need database transactions based on your uh, applications requirement and i've explained when that can happen so you have to think that way you know when you need a database transaction and when you don't right so when you have a mixed bag of queries so these are the most obvious cases where you should definitely go for database transaction for example if you are performing some insert some update or you know some deletion on some data so in our case you know in case of studytonight.com so we have a small flow where a user purchases a course so we have some interactive courses available on the website which a user can purchase when a user purchases a course what happens is uh, there are certain coins associated with a user account that are stored in let's say a user point table right inside this we have certain number of points that a user might have then there is a course enrollment table in which you will keep whether you know which user is enrolled and which user is not enrolled and then there are other helper tables like you know point ledger in which we keep uh, you know how many points are credited or debited from a user account etc so when a user enrolls for a course what happens is from the user point table we deduct the 5000 points so an update happens over here right and then if the number of coins are available and they are deducted successfully the course enrollment so an insert happens over here right so the course enrollment is done and then in the point ledger also we insert a new entry of you know debiting of these 5000 coins right so now a group of updation queries are happening update is happening then an insert is happening even though they are happening on different tables and another insert is happening 
So for such cases, uh, you know, we should definitely use database transactions and all these things should be performing database transactions because if, even if a single one fails, we should fail the entire process. That's the requirement. We cannot do like, you know, 5,000 points are deducted over here. The user is enrolled in the course, right? But point ledger entry fails. So then our point ledger will have inconsistent data. Or maybe, you know, this fails, the point deduction fails, but the user is still enrolled in the course and this also passes. So then, you know, uh, without even deducting the required coins, we are enrolling a user into the database. So this is an example, right? This is how you figure out where you need database transaction. Now we have a couple of, uh, you know, functions in our website as well on stratoid.com where we do not use a uh, database transactions at all. But there are some important, uh, you know, steps like this one where course enrollment is happening or where, you know, some very important data is being updated or modified in multiple tables in one single go in one single function call. So that's where, you know, we should be very careful and we should definitely use transactions, right? So we use PHP in the backend. In PHP, you have, you know, uh, functions that you can use with MySQL and you can begin the database transaction. And once you are done, you can execute it, right? You can commit it, sorry. And in case you get some error, you can, you know, call the rollback function and every change will be rollback. So that's the basic, you know, uh, feature in almost all the programming language. Yes, different frameworks provide different ways of executing transactions, but it should be like this. You know, you begin a transaction, then you perform all your SQL queries, right? If everything goes well, you know, uh, if everything passes, then you commit. Unless, until anything fails, you roll back all the changes, right? So that's how a basic database transaction flow happens. And I've already covered the example for isolation. So isolation is very important. Uh, this is again use case based, but I think I have explained what use cases require isolation. And uh, different programming languages have different implementation, but this should be the basic flow, right? So that's how you should be focusing on implementing transactions in your application when you are interacting with database. I hope this video makes sense. I hope you are able to understand where you can use transactions and where you should seriously consider using transactions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, like I said in the beginning also, I have 80,000 subscribers, but very less people watch the videos. I'm not able to understand. Maybe, you know, I'm not able to figure out what my uh, subscribers want from me. So, you know, you can also tell me what sort of content you would want me to make and I'll be very happy to create that sort of content. I'm trying a lot of things out. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, I'll figure it out myself, but yes. If you like this video, just give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you like such videos, then subscribe to our channel. If you haven't subscribed already, press the bell icon. Please, please press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post a video. I am trying to be regular on uh, updating, you know, YouTube videos, posting more videos and shorts as well. Yeah, that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope, you know, database transactions concept becomes a bit clearer to you after watching this video. Thank you for your time and see you in the next video.